When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stop going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is gayish. The podcast that doesn't trust fish because they never have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's not true. There's a fish that does. I saw it on YouTube. Ew, I hate it. Yeah, it walks on the floor. Ew, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm going to pretend that didn't exist. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. And we're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality. And today... Today we're going to talk about reality television. We're going to talk about reality television. Fucking Dan is on assignment. <laughs> no... is that, he's out in the field right now. <laughs> he traveled to Baghdad for an on-site uh, report. Um, we'll, which will come to you <laughs> next. Yeah, let's give him more work that we're barely paying <laughs> Great. him for. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, hey, Kyle. Hey, Mike. Um, so if we sound like idiots, <laughs> it's because I should put the time cave back on, but I forget how to do it. Oh. Anyway. Can, we can fake the ti- time cave. Oh, I can't really fake it. Well, anyway. <laughs> so this is coming out two days after the U.S. election. And we don't know how it went. No. In fact, the world might have ended. That's true. That's true. You, you, If you never hear this, well, then that sentence alone is very <laughs> silly. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we record on Sunday. So that is a couple days before the election. So we, um, if you didn't already hear it, uh, we posted an election specific shrinkage Um which again we haven't recorded, but it's the the past it's the past of the future for us. Anyway, yeah, see, <laughs> makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, but we decided to kind of contain it into an election ep- or thing, so that those that want to listen to it can. And if you just are so fucking sick and tired of elections, you can you know skip that. So just so you know, today we won't be talking about election shit. We won't be talking about President Elect Betty Crocker. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. that's for sure what's gonna happen yeah oh. it's 2020 who fucking knows who knows yeah um great but first uh corrections oh okay um it's it's so stupid i'm being so stupid do it do it do um it. i said that some like it hot was from the 40s it came out in 1959 so i was off by like wow many years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but it still, I think, was problematic then and is problematic now. Great. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I heard that uh, Marilyn Monroe was just drunk all the time and could barely get her lines out and had to uh, like do them over and over again. Or... Yeah. But she was also... I really liked that movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like one of those weird things where it's like, oh, I really like that. It's very problematic, but I like it. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But it's horrible, but it's pretty good. Yeah, just like Tu Wong Fu. It's in that same category. I don't know of... what that is. When Patrick Swayze and Wesley Snipes and John Leguizamo played drag queens. Oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's in, in the 90s. It's it's worth watching. We should watch it. Sometime. Correction next time. Is it really in the 90s? Yes. That I'm certain of. Okay. All okay. right. Um, well, I should be fucking wrong. It was like 89 I, or I something. I just really want you to be just for funsies. Great. Just to keep this train rolling. Um. Okay. You ready for the news? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's start with this one. So... I feel like I'm... News! Oh, you okay? Bless you. <laughs> Gesundheit. <laughs> Thank you. You're, this mic has COVID. Um, <laughs> so, I feel like I've talked about this before, but I don't remember if it was on the show or not. So, somebody let us know. Yeah. Pope Francis has been in the news recently because uh, there's a documentary that came out called Francesco. And it's about... It's my favorite Lady Gaga song. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fernando, is the, you look it, like your piece. Well, Fernando together. and Alejandro. Oh no. yeah. Oh, you're right. It's not Fernando. <laughs> Wait, Fernando's this is a Abba song. <laughs> <laughs> Something in there was right or funny or not. I'm not sure. You cho- you choose. Okay. Uh, so years after he famously responded to a reporter's question about gay priests with the words "quote Who am I to judge?" which we for sure talked about on the show at the time when it happened. Pope Francis has made another effort to reach out to LGBTQ people on Wednesday, so two weeks ago. 
Uh, he became the first Roman Catholic pontiff to show support for same-sex civil unions. Yeah, I don't think we talked about this on the show. Mm. Yeah, that was big. That made the rounds and was on the news things and everyone was talking about it, at least all the homos. Yep, yep. He said, quote, homosexual people have the right to be in a family. You can't kick someone out of a family nor make their life miserable for this. Mm. What, we have, what we have to have is a civil union law. That way they are legally covered. So... The thing is, it's in this weird space for me as a recovering Catholic Mm -hmm. of it's hard to overstate just how dramatic it is for the Pope of the Catholic Church to say that Mm -hmm. at the same time recognizing that the that in that sentence is utter horse shit <laughs> that like civil unions are good enough yeah or equivalent or that there's something magical about the word marriage that needs to not apply to queers yeah and um anyway i don't know do, do you have you don't care about religion but do you know no, no, re- <laughs> I, I do i do think like steps forward in religion are really important because i could see a day in the future in the distant future where i'm like super on board i mean i'm not on board with like people that are religious but like the, the institution like I, I can see a day that I'm cool with it if there's a big, massive reform of Christianity to mm. be, like, down and cool, which I think they'll have to do from a marketing side because, <laughs> like, young people are all super gay. So I think, like, to keep up. Um, but, well, I, I saw mixed reactions. Some people saying, like, he's going to backpedal, just watch it. And I haven't... So I, I tempered my enthusiasm with waiting. Waiting. Yeah. I mean, I think... I think what I'm waiting for is at less him backpedaling, which he very well could. Mm-hmm. He has he has sort of before, like off the cuff. The the who am I to judge statement was made on an airplane to a reporter that like they were sharing a bag of peanuts or something like, uh, and and he was not speaking. Did he just say who am I t- to judge? people that eat nuts right. was he what was he <laughs> did he understand did the he question really say yeah 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 <laughs> but he also then they made it very clear that he wasn't speaking ex cathedra which uh, like the pope speaks for god but only when he says he's speaking for god it's mm. not like everything that comes out of his face yeah he's not god. like i'm tired yeah. and like that's god yeah. like <laughs> yeah. um but but uh i i'm less worried about that and i'm more worried about the backlash right like i th- i think that fuck i'm so sorry I think that Trump is a direct knee-jerk result of having a black president yeah. and people losing their goddamn minds. Yeah. And I, I I fear that the Catholic Church will make a similar knee-jerk course correction to be extra fucked up <laughs> as a result of the more liberal, lenient, tolerant policies mm. of this pope. Yeah. It, it's weird how it works because the 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 cardinals choose the pope and for the last several years the pope has been choosing the cardinals so mm. there is a feedback loop there that maybe wow that reminds um, me of the supreme court it is very similar except with more bullshit <laughs> and 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 i but about the same number of bibles anyway <laughs> um yeah so we'll see well it, it's it's interesting how it's like people are like but it's religion, like, it goes against religion and blah, 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 and then the Pope will say that, and they still won't, like, now I disagree with the Pope. Be- yeah. Like, it's like, what, do, you, what yeah. do you actually care about here? Or we know that it's not actually religion that's fueling that, but, yep. you know. Yep, absolutely. Anyway. Anyway. Great. Next. Cool. Yeah. Uh, next, the BBC is in, I won't say trouble, but uh, they are under they're in time out. They're, they're in scrutiny. You're, you've been following the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the the, the BBC has not re- big black cocks. <laughs> the British Broadcasting Cox. Company. Oh, company. <laughs> oh, big British cocks. I bet they're uncut. Yeah. Okay. Um. So they have released new editorial impartiality guidelines. So people that work for the BBC have these guidelines that are supposed to be in place in order to preserve the appearance and reputation of impartiality on the part of the news. They, unlike us, take very seriously that <laughs> news be news. Yeah. And, and um, so those guidelines included the guideline that quote those working in news and current affairs uh need to use good 
judgment. Judgment is required with regard to marches or demonstrations, though it should be assumed that most marches are contentious in terms of impartiality to some degree or another or other. So then they were asked, if you say that as a BBC employee, I can't go to marches or demonstrations, does that include Black Lives Matter, but m m more contentiously, apparently, Pride? Mm -hmm. Can queer employees of BBC go to Pride? And an anonymous employee claims they were told in relation to the new guidelines that, quote, they could be issued with a formal warning or suspended from their job if they attend LGBT plus protests. What do you think about that? That's very difficult to, if you are an employee there, to not express any, like, they have to be then an impartial human being all the time. That seems very difficult and far too overreaching for what they're it's like you know on twitter everyone says like opinions my own like they could march and just put in a sign that's like on their neck that says opinions my own yeah okay i just think it's very it's ridiculous to try to tell lgbt people they can't care about the, their cause it's i'm very torn on this hmm. I... in, in what way well, I think that, what do I think? I mean, I think that there is a world in which well-known BBC reporter, Hugh McKinstry, I'm making up a name, is, is, is then photographed and seen marching in a gay pride parade, and that is used as leverage against the BBC as proof that they are a liberal fake news mainstream media propaganda machine, sure. right? And, and that fear comes from a place of our fucking president doing that to our legitimate journalism yeah. outlets yeah. and not wanting to see that happen to a news source that I actually really trust. I watch the BBC a lot. And... I agree with you that it's sort of ridiculous to expect your employees to check their lives at the door <laughs> and they don't have to work there. Right. Like, I don't, I don't I, know. I just think every journalist is going to have a personal opinion about things that does not make you a good or bad jur journalist because everyone is expected to as a journalist or I don't know, not everyone, at least these people are expected to report in a factual way. Like you're never going to be able to re remove your own bias. Sure. So you have to make sure you're talking to both sides about an issue when it's reasonable that there are multiple sides that are fair and legit. Like it, it's just comes with journalism that you have personal views and you have to report out in a certain way that tries to, if you're part of one of these certain kind of news stations like you have to report out in a neutral way sure they're but they're, they're also saying they're not saying don't be gay and they're not even saying don't be pro-gay rights they're saying don't be seen representing that cause in a public scenario i think that's ridiculous yeah, all right cool great <laughs> uh by the way gayish media employees are required to march in parades. <laughs> <laughs> so get it together dan yep uh last but not least great some very happy news Ooh. um megan rapineau captain of the u.s women's soccer team uh has proposed to her girlfriend and fellow olympian sue bird yeah who is uh played for the wnba championship winning seattle storm yeah um, and they both posted the picture of her proposing to her on their Instagrams at the same time. And, uh, the Seattle storm tweeted back, congrats to the power couple on their <laughs> engagement. And I just think it's, I just think it's lovely. Yeah. That's adorable. Their Yeah. Their picture was super cute. And then I saw pictures of them and Yeah. Yeah, see, lesbians, if you're international athlete superstars, will care about your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm excited. Go lesbians. Congrats. Yeah. That's it. That's the news. Awesome. Yeah. Are you ready for Patreon then? Yeah, let's do it. I would like to thank Patreon members. Uh, Chase. Chase Thurkaisen. The Kaizen? Probably. Uh, Mike McGlynn? <laughs> McGlynn? Mike McGlynn. I wonder uh, if that's Scottish, Mike. Go ahead. 
sorry, Mike McLean, <laughs> um, uh, Aaron Kang, Great. and uh, Jace Clow or Clo or Claw or Clow. <laughs> um, and a special thank you to uh, Daniel Milyukov. I apologize for last week. He he knows what happened. He so sorry. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> uh, so a special thank you to Daniel. Um, if you want, I think we now we have over forty hours of bonus content. We're yep. If you want listening to this to feel like a job, there's forty <laughs> hours for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a full time jobs week. Um, we're starting to post a little bit more uh, video content to our uh, for our Patreon. So I don't know why you want to see us, you fucking weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> or podcasters that's not the point of this uh but you can join by going to patreon.com slash gayish podcast and that also helps support us and and helps us do maintain the show and grow the show and do cool stuff this time it's my it's my fault i wanted coffee (laughs) that's the buzzer (laughs) our time is up here um also a couple events yeah uh that i wanted to mention is it is intersex day of solidarity on november 8th which they're normally in liquid form and now (laughs) (laughs) oh i like that but in a really bad way um yeah just recently it was like intersex visibility day or something yeah so you're visible and solid so that's pretty cool um uh and it is true so they they are they matter Oh, 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 I just talked about fish and Great. legs, so I guess I can't be too upset with you. Um, and uh, the second week of November is Transgender Awareness Week. Great. So be aware, everyone. Be be aware that that's what we're that's what a thing is. Um, trans men are men, trans women are women. So just that's what you should do and know and be yeah. be aware. Just hold that in your mind all week. Hold that in your heart too. <laughs> um. Do you want to talk about reality TV? Let's talk about reality TV. First Um, of all, I want to know, are you a fan? Just in general of the genre, do you like it? I, yes, but in a weird (laughs) way, what? (laughs) That's not a, that's not a ringing endorsement. No, no, it's definitely not. It's definitely not. It's one of those things where I used to watch it way more. Mm -hmm. um, And then I cut my cable. Mm-hmm. And I know uh, now it, it, it's getting on Hulu and shit, but um, uh, but at that time, so then I, that's when I stopped watching it. Basically, when I graduated college, in a way, um, it's one of those things. Anytime I actually watch reality TV, I get sucked in and really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, most recently, uh, Real Housewives of uh, Beverly Hills is the best. Uh, Real Housewives that I've seen slash maybe reality show at all. Um, I watched it because my now ex would watch it all the time. And then I'd be like, I'm just going to sit here and watch. And then like two hours later, I'd be watching and he wouldn't. (laughs) Yeah, that's how my dad is about Dancing with the Stars. He complains (laughs) that it's Nancy that wants to watch it. Like, oh, he's into it. That is (laughs) a very like straight dude thing to be like. Oh, I guess we have to watch The Voice. Yeah, and then, like, <laughs> yeah. like, honey, sit down. So it makes me okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I've even watched. I talk about like I'm not into RuPaul's Drag Race, but I've watched the first seven seasons or whatever. Like I've watched a bu- wow, yeah, recently. No, uh, no, a while ago, like five years ago or something. Like I got into it and then started watching all of it. Hmm. Um, what about you? I. I always I, I do watch it and then hate myself for doing it. Yeah. It's like eating a whole bag of Doritos. <laughs> it it was it was delicious but not worth how disgusting I feel afterwards. Mm, yeah. What I mean what are the ones that you've watched and what are the Doritos that you've well, eaten recently? So I don't know well I, not not recently. So my ex-wife and I watched a lot of reality TV. It was her jam and in fact when we very first started dating we applied to be on the amazing race Mm -hmm. so we went through the whole exercise of filling out this massive application they ask all kinds of questions too at least they did at the time this was fuck you know 15 years ago or more 20 years ago um and then you had to like film yourself answering some other questions and send that in too with your application it was just um I don't know. That was quite the quite the experience. But then, like, we were big fans of Big Brother and The Amazing Race, and we watched we watched it a lot. When you did your application, did you like try to be a little bit like have a little bit weird or crazy side to you to try to get on? 
No. Ah, that's your problem. She had plenty. Okay, she could, okay, yeah, if you could play, like, the straight man, uh, ironically. Um, yeah. And, sh- yeah, she could be, the, like, the crazy one. I would... would love to get my hands on a copy of that <gasps> recording just to see it and see, like, what are the signs that this person is gay? If I, like... <laughs> if I found a recording of, like, that for myself, I would... Like, if I'm watching that on my phone, I would break my phone and throw it in the water. I know that's not how it works, but I would, like, I would not at all want to do that. Hmm. Hmm. Um, yeah, like, uh, reality TV is, like, gay in a way that I don't totally understand why. Yeah. Um, like, oh, the real world. I watched the shit out of the real world, like, for a really long time. Same. Especially in college, which I think is just what we did in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember I had a TV in my room, and that's, like, MTV was, like, always on. TRL was, of course, I'd have to, like, get home and get that on, because you had to watch TV at a certain time back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, Real World Hawaii, I think, was the first one that I saw. And mm-hmm. I think Ruth was the alcoholic that I think was also bisexual. Mm. Uh, like, I think reality TV has done a lot for gay visibility. Yeah yeah perhaps problematically as the like that's why they're interesting mm. kind of way but it, but visibility you're right i think that's the first gay i remember seeing is danny on the real world uh, 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 uh new orleans because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the one a, with the military boyfriend yep, that they had to blur out the face of and yep, all of that yeah yep yep, yep. Yeah. um there's another i forget that i didn't actually watch this one i forget which season it was but i think i'm like the clip because i also watched all those like mtv here are the best hundred moments in real world mm, history yeah. um and one guy i remember like yelled at some one of the women on the cast because she opened his envelope and it was like this way blown out like he blew it out of proportion come to find out he came out in a note or his mom opened a note and that's how she found out he was gay oh wow and as i was thinking so like he has this bad you know, association with people opening a shit. And like, I didn't even think about that. Like when I think, Oh, I had a totally great childhood. No one told me it was bad. Whatever. His mom opening this, finding out he's gay and having a bad reaction. Like these are all these early signs that we get that it's not okay to come out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's just like these things that I don't really think about until I think about them. Yeah, for sure. For real. Something, something else uh, is the heteronormativity of reality TV. Like, all of the stuff that's popular now that I can think of is like the bachelor and the bachelorette and all the fucking spinoffs from that show, Mm. which is just all about like cis dudes and cis chicks banging each other. Yeah. And then dancing with the stars, which any queer representation there has been super controversial and people talk about it, but like the whole thing is this traditional, the man dances with the woman and the man leads like there's, there's a lot wrapped up into like, feeding straight people back these reflections of themselves well that's part of what i hate about reality tv like you mentioned um feeling gross afterwards most of me feeling gross is the i don't want i can't watch the bachelor i can't watch bachelor in paradise like there are all these things that people have like invited me to watch and it's my same thing of like on insta instagram seeing all the insta gays i'm like oh here are these hot rich people I, i know it's fake but like hot rich people being hot and being rich yeah. and i just feel so inadequate after watching it it makes me, like that's my feeling of gross like, like i just feel ugly and dumpy and gross yeah 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 so i think it's like very and maybe that's why i like real housewives because it's just all women and i don't so i don't <laughs> <have to> care <laughs> you know i'm still jealous though uh, yeah, yeah, but, same. yeah um we are going to have a guest on. We're going to have a guest on. Who knows way more than we do uh, because he uh, both was on a reality show and hosts a podcast about reality TV. Uh, it is David Yontef. He is from the Behind the Velvet Rope podcast. Um, so he's going to be on again. He doesn't know the election results either. So just know that going into it, we are not talking about anything like that. Um, and then we're going to be on his show. So we'll we'll cross collab there. Yeah. Um, and we'll see how much we talk about Lisa Vanderpump. Do you know who that is? It's, isn't she dead? <laughs> She's uh, Anderson Cooper's mom. <laughs> <laughs> she was queen in the 1700s. And no, um, nope, not at all. Uh, one, one of the housewives. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. She also has the show Vanderpump Rules. I don't. I, I for not liking or or it's not the for not caring so much today about 
reality TV. I sure have a lot to say about it and yeah. opinions. My favorite reality TV show is Queen of Jordan. Oh my god, <laughs> that was so fucking good. That was so good. Um, <laughs> so when we when we get back from the break, we will have David Yontif yeah. from Behind the Velvet Rope. Yeah. Um, yeah. Enjoy, everybody. <laughs> Should we take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Break. This is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. So are we back? We're back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> we are here with David Yontif, who is the host of the Behind the Velvet Rope podcast and kind of in the reality TV celebrity world. Yeah, David, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. So we... Uh, uh, we talk about stereotypes, and I feel like Mike and I don't totally fit the stereotype of being super into reality TV. Uh, Mike and I have varying degrees to which with, we are interested. With, without data, I feel like gays love reality TV. Does that jive yeah. with your understanding? I mean, listen, well, when it comes to like, yeah, yes. I mean, the easy answer is yes. <laughs> like when it comes to like housewives and all these Bravo celebrities that I interview. Well, I, I even joke myself, like the other day, some girl sent me a dm and she's like i just want to tell you my boyfriend and i love you and i took that and i screenshotted it and posted mm -hmm. it i was like today's a good day i have one straight male fan <laughs> like, okay i mean did... there's nobody straight who listens to my podcast there's nobody straight who watches <laughs> reality tv we have below deck there's a couple straight reality shows like i think shark tank probably has straight <laughs> men that watch it but yes as a whole it's gay men and women and okay, why is it so gay? Like, there's nothing fundamentally gay about these concepts. And, and in fact, a lot of them, like Bachelor, we were talking about is is straight people. I feel like some of the more like the actually overtly gay shows are a little bit smaller than like all the big successes. Why is it gay? Why is it so gay? I mean, well, again, like I still would think like The Apprentice when it was on and like Survivor and and Shark Tag. I would think there are and. Below Deck on Bravo is notoriously the straight male show. So I do think there's, I just think the majority of reality shows with those few exceptions, like it's just campy, it's drama. Like even though The Bachelor is straight people, it's still women getting drunk, wanting <laughs> to do God knows what to this guy. It's still, it's campy, it's drama, it's, it's a disaster. It's like a disaster <laughs> and a half. So... <laughs> Gay men are attracted to drama, not to be stereotypical, but that's just how it is. And why? Is, so you like this is also a theme. Yeah, gays like drama, campy shit, disasters. Why? Like, why is that? Why are those things inherently gay? Because there's something about them that it that are. Well, I mean, I have the behind the velvet rope reality TV podcast. You have the gayish podcast, so you should be experts on this. I I, I don't know. I don't understand why. Gay men are attracted to drama and disasters. And I mean, I don't know. I, I like a good personally. I like a good like underdog story. So mm -hmm. I will always root for like on any reality show who is the disaster or the one that's kind of like outcasted. That's kind of like what I like. Mm -hmm. But as a whole, why straight men are not as drawn to reality TV? I, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. So I wonder if like, oh, this is some Freud shit. Okay. I wonder if it's mm -hmm. like, like gays before we come out of the closet are so like hidden and, and, and trying to avoid scrutiny. And then you look at reality TV, which it's all about scrutiny and spectacle. I wonder if that's some sort of like proxy. Like I, I, I wish that I was comfortable enough with my life that I could have it out there like that mm -hmm. or something. I don't know. Mm. You all talk amongst yourselves. I don't know what the fuck well, I'm saying. Well, I mean, it's the same way like when gays come out of the closet that then, you know, they do want to post only Instagram pictures like shirtless and make out yeah. with their boyfriends and just be over the top like they're starving for attention that they mm. missed out on in their formative years. Mm. So if mm. you want to be psychological about it, that's a whole nother issue. Yeah, and maybe, yeah, then maybe they're projecting that like desire for attention and stardom onto what they watch and watch people that have gone from. I mean, a lot of the re reality people are famous for being on reality TV, except <laughs> right. for Denise Richards, like <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa Rinna. 
What did she do before? She was an actress. Uh, Melrose Plays. Oh, I didn't know that. Talk about a, feel... talk about a dramatic show. It was great. <laughs> How I do you mean, feel about Lisa Renna? Well, because I love Melrose Place, I've always loved Lisa Renna. But this past season, I have my blinders. I think are finally off. I think they're finally off. Hmm. I, I've just she seems to go back and forth, pretending to be like good and bad and nice and evil and always trying to be like the sweet one that's like, Oh, I didn't mean to. Well, you know what it is? I think she's too like self-producing now. So, Mm. I mean, once I think I know like once to me, you know what you're doing and you really are trying to make a TV show. You kind of have lost me. I mean, I think that's the whole problem with a lot of reality TV these days is everyone's just too aware of what they're, doing like if you cast me in a reality show a i wouldn't be fired for years because i would know what i was doing (laughs) but like that's it's good for you because you have a job but it's like you then just it's not reality it's not reality anymore this is something i didn't know we were going to take this departure mike um you know do do whatever you want to do off to the side play cat's cradle or something yeah sure (laughs) Um, okay what i've noticed recently is it feels like the Housewives reunion shows are starting to get a little bit meta because they're like talking about what did you do just for the show and what is real. And they're kind of breaking that barrier in my mind of like, like it, it's kind of nice because it's authentic in a way, but then it's kind of like shattering this illusion that we're all, we all know it's not true, but are pretending that those things are real. And it's very, I think I like it, but I'm not sure. Do you agree with my assessment? Yeah. It's all weird. I mean, I think the whole social media aspect is really weird too. in that not like at least 50% of what happens on these reality shows happens off air online. Mm -hmm. So like when you see the headlines throughout the season, 90% of it is like, she said this on her Twitter, and then she said (laughs) this, and it's kind of like this whole, like, the drama's not even on the screen. It's now, like, what's happening on Twitter and, like, Instagram and who hates who, which I also think is good and bad at the same time. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, oh, well, that didn't happen on air, these two, and it's like getting worse every season where like these fights happen like online in real time, but you're fighting over something that happened that night on the show, which happened six months ago. It's just, it's <laughs> yeah. a weird thing. It's I don't weird. know that that's reality TV though. I think that's just reality. Like look at politics and Trump and his tweets and AOC and her tweet backs. And like, yeah. like it, it seems like the whole world is just living real life, passive aggressively and then really actually aggressively online on social media. Yeah. And social media, the stuff that happens is like making headlines. It's like so-and-so just said she hates this. And I always am like, what's the source? Because like my podcast is in the news a lot just because of people I have on. So I'm always like, was that a different part? Like, what's the source? And I swear, every time I, I scroll up and I see, it's always like on her Instagram last, I'm like, oh, did she do another interview? It's always Instagram, Twitter, mm-hmm. Twitter, Instagram, 90%. I'm like, man, like, you can just go on your own account and say something and it gets picked up by the news now if you're a certain level of yeah. fame. Yeah, no one it's gives weird. a shit what we say on our social media, <laughs> so we'll have to keep working on that. Yeah. We should start a fight with like Lisa Vanderpump and try to see if we can get that going. Sure. Seriously. I'm obsessed with her. She is <laughs> horrible and she's been more and more horrible the more I've seen her and seems like, David, what you're talking about of like, people that then know what they're doing and are producing themselves. Like she seems like exactly that person. I've had, so everyone always thinks that I come for her and Erica Jane. It's like, I have a lot of guests on that have come for Lisa Vanderpump. It's like, it's not me, but everyone, my listener base thinks that I hate Lisa Vanderpump for some reason. I'm not saying I particularly love her. I'm just saying a lot of the guests I have on have past relations with her and they don't have anything Uh nice to say. Yeah, that makes sense. Because the thing is, like, if you are on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills with Lisa and you come, to me, it's like, it's your time to tell your truth. It doesn't really matter what I think about Lisa. If you love her or hate her, it's kind of like your time in the spotlight. I feel the same. Like, sometimes I get in trouble for what Mike says. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't do that. (laughs) Right. You're like. I edited it, so I left it in there, but I didn't say that. (laughs) Do you get in trouble for anything I say, or is that just me? 
I mean, people talk to me about things that you say. <laughs> really? Yeah. This is what we're talking about. Now, what did, well, I guess we'll talk later. I want to know what See, people said about me. Sure. Now you know how I feel. It's like, <laughs> but right. the one who has the editing, man, that's, that's, that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous power to give over. It's yeah. Almost always Kyle, because he knows exactly what you just said. <laughs> Okay, so well, let's get back on the. So I mean, we talked about a bunch of seemingly shitty things. Like, is reality TV good or bad for us? <laughs> I, I, listen, I feel I feel people watch reality TV for two reasons. I really do feel like it could be boiled down to two reasons. One, you take like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, or it is lifestyles of the rich and famous. There's that whole aspect of it, of like, mm -hmm. you're just lost in these people's worlds and it's aspirational. And it's like, I'm picturing myself, you know, living in that $30 million house. So I do mm -hmm. think it's like this escapism. And then I do think the other part is these people are a fucking mess. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I didn't really think my life was going so well. And it kind of is. It makes you feel better <laughs> about your own life. So I think it's either A or B. And so like, if you take it for what it is, it's not bad for us. I don't mm -hmm. think. Huh. I just, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. I just think that it's come so far that it's like, can this go on forever? Can housewives go on forever? It has to end at some point. At mm. some point. Mm. I mean, Survivor yeah, is still going strong like 25 years later. And yeah, The Bachelor is going to be 22. Is going to be 20 also. In like two years, I think The Bachelor turns 20. I mean, I, th I think how cheap, the cheap production aspect is such, such a value that it uh, it's it's hard for me to see that going away because that's you'd have to get to the point where that's either super expensive or not worth the money. And it's so cheap to produce comparatively. It seems like, yeah, it's going to be around for a while. Although other than Beverly Hills, the ratings on housewives now through Corona are down across the board. Mm. New York was down last season. Potomac is down even below deck, which is Bravo's highest rated show. The ratings are down. Hmm. Hmm. I think that's just maybe because like we have enough drama in real life right now. <laughs> like we don't need more in our well, entertainment. That's I'm starting. To, I mean, I just got, I've discussed this before. I wonder if like there's a new desire for a new type of reality TV, hmm. like a more would that... aspirational. Oh, okay. Well, like there's a, there's sort of a game show renaissance happening right now. The last like year or two, all of these old shows that are being revamped, reskinned and put back on TV, right? Like let's make a deal is back and we Price is link. Right is doing a thing again. And they just got Sue, back on the, the air last is, week. Like is doing uh Sue Sylvester. That's her, yeah. <laughs> that's her <laughs> name on Glee is doing weakest link. And like family feud, like celebrity family feud and all that's back. I also think, though, that's not just a reality TV trend. I think that's an overall trend. I think everyone's like, oh, wait, cable's dying. Let's try to remake all this old shit so nostalgic 90s kids can, like, mm. I just think they're remaking everything. Hmm. All right. Yeah. But aren't, aren't, aren't game shows also cheap to make? Comparatively speaking, I don't actually I, know. I mean, I would think so, right? I would think so. I mean, so. how much do they pay Howie Mandel? Is he still doing that? <laughs> like, I would think that's no the deal. thing. I was just going to say, yeah. I think the host is all that you really need to pay. Like, yeah. when they mm -hmm. get a certain big name. Yeah. Like, I mm. imagine, like, Bob Barker at the end of Price is Right of his career was making a ton of money. Mm. Yeah. I mean, mostly from the, like, the the pet the nonprofit pet industry paying him for that. <laughs> that end little line gets him two mil a year or something. Big vet was sponsored. Big, yes, yes. Um, so given that you talk to no people in the like reality TV game, what are the thing? Okay. My, in my mind, they are fake and stupid <laughs> just to get right to it That's okay. what what is the truth of these people when you talk to them are are any of them real are are any of them down to earth are any of them actually intelligent well okay so you know what it is it's like people that didn't last because i talked to a lot of people that are not on the show anymore like 
there is a common theme amongst like housewives in particular, like the one hit wonders that come for like one season and didn't work out. Mm. They all have the same story and they're all like, I came and I brought my life. Like they thought they should bring their real life. Mm. And you're like, oh honey, no, like nobody cares (laughs) about your real life. So that, I think it's like when you get hired, it really is sink or swim. Like, I don't think, I really don't think there's any like a manual. There's no talking to, it's just kind of like go. So hmm. I, I think the career people that are there, they know what they're doing. So like they become caricatures of themselves. Hmm. So they hmm. become like it. Listen, life becomes all about the show that I can tell you. Like if hmm. something happens off camera, in between they're literally like okay let's save that or like well maybe i would have done this in seven years let's do it in three months when the cameras like they literally will it's not fake but it's like they'll create a storyline or something for the show there are people that rent houses when mm-hmm. it's time to film to show oh, wow to pretend like they look live at in me that. yeah <laughs> and it's this wow. is a huge house and okay i'm in my third year now so my money's more so i i could afford 20 grand a month mm. for this house for my three you know when then when the show's not filming we'll say we moved or whatever and mm. that happens a yeah. lot so it really like your whole life becomes about the show so i don't know to answer your question are they nice respectable i don't know like that's taking it far right I mean, that that happened to us to a certain extent. About a year into the show, we had this conversation that we realized that, like, we were saying to each other, don't talk about this. We need to save it for the show, right? And, like, it it definitely impacted. It it each impacted the other. Our real lives impacted the show, and the show impacted our real lives. Yeah, Um, Yeah, so imagine that if you're in your like fourth year or making like three something or then it's like six something then it's like eight something like you that will be heightened to the end yeah. degree imagine yeah. if people were actually listening kyle <laughs> <laughs> someday <laughs> one can only dream and like okay, i don't talk- know imagine if someone said like the two of you need to hate each other now and your check was like eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars you might hate oh, each easy. other i right. already like, kind of hate him so right. it's fine. so there you go I've been trying to pick drama with other people and it never catches. Yeah. I need to pick drama with you. Oh, no, Dan. That's what we're paying. Oh, Dan. shit. <laughs> okay. Yep. 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 I can ghost write his tweets back to me. Okay. This yep. is going to be great. <laughs> See, um, I mean, you know. Um, you said it seemed like you're saying like the people that are like longer into it or, or kind of stick around that that swim and make the test are a little bit more like know how to play the game and it seemed like a little bit more fake but not my kyle richards right she's she's the realest one of the game right i mean i think kyle <laughs> knows what she's doing after all this time she is smart but also seems like authentic to me i mean listen i think it doesn't matter who is thrown under the bus like there's a new rumor that her and Dorit and Lisa Rinna have now decided this season's this season of Garcelle and they're going to go after Garcelle. It's like, I, I just don't think they care. I just think they're like, what do we need to do to make a, the next season great of this mm. show? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What does Luann brag about now that she can't do her uh, showgirls thing? She has nothing to talk to everyone about now. <laughs> Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, they're they're filming New York now, so it'll be interesting to see. I, I don't know what Loanne's storyline is going to be. Dis- I don't know if you're allowed to say this. I despised her after rehab. Like, you, <laughs> and good for her, but she just fucking sucks after that. You liked her before. <laughs> she just. I don't. I didn't have. You like a drunk care. countess. Oh yeah, the drunk. What's the other one that's always drunk and might Sonya? have a problem? Is that the like short hair, like always angry and yelling? Oh, Dorinda. Dorinda. <laughs> why? Oh, why did you say it like that? Okay, let's not forget that I know these people in real life. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay, who's t- who's the who are the worst people you know? You actually know. <laughs> uh, Dorinda's a pretty disgusting human being. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's also fired. So, bravo <laughs> to that. No, n- no pun intended. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be happy to never see Dorinda again as long as I shall live. 
who who else is terrible who else is like the worst people you actually jill zarin know is a horrible person who's we don't know who's that she was like first season like seasons one through four of real housewives of new york you mm. know her you know her go and google I, if it. i saw her okay yeah <laughs> i mean i'll i'll leave it at that those two are vile hmm. Hmm. so i everyone else i i mean yeah those, That's those not, are, that didn't sound like a ringing endorsement well those would be the, the two that i would say like ugh, i'm happy to never see again yeah so you, you you mentioned like you know these people or are friends with these people and it, i i get the impression that you just like decided one day i'm gonna make these people be in my life and you willed it to be so yes Is that that's exactly now i also wrote a whole book on it but it's god knows when that's coming out because we have this thing called covid oh, yeah. um <laughs> But I, I wrote a book about going from fan to friend that if you read this book and you follow this book, it is a how to guide about how to become friends with, listen, you're probably not going to become friends with, you know, Bruce Springsteen or Bono. But mm. if someone is accessible, which reality TV stars are, mm. this book, it's a real how to book. It's not, I mean, you know, it's lighthearted and there's some stories peppered in there some fun stories but it really is a how-to book if you read it it will work it doesn't happen mm. in a day got to be patient mm. but yes i i mean that's the whole reason why i started my podcast in the beginning i started my podcast because yes i was like i don't understand listen the thing about reality tv is there's these people and these blogs and these pages and all they do is sit around for hours and talk about what they saw on the tv and mm. i was like i don't understand this like i don't want to talk about 17 people all day i'll just go meet them like i'll insert myself into the story and then i'll have something to talk about because like i'll have had an actual interaction with these people as opposed to did you see what she did last night well it's five weeks later why are we still talking about what happened on the show five weeks ago <laughs> mm. that's I, that i don't do so i willed it upon myself yeah i'm like i'm just gonna go become friends with these people and then it was a process and then you know it's varying degrees i'm not like best friends with like kyle richards and lisa rinna they live in la and they're like bigger names but there's varying yeah. degrees of reality stars yeah i became friends with a lot of them because i willed it and then that's when into that i was like there has to be a business in here somewhere like the average person is not hanging out with these people on a Saturday night. It's kind of like, this is what I compare it to. I compare it to like, if you're born into like a child of a celebrity, at some point in your childhood, you probably realize like, my life isn't like other people's, right? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you don't realize it. Like if you know, if your mother's Madonna, you don't really realize, I mean, she's your mother. Like you still don't really want to hang out with her probably, <laughs> you know? And like, at some point you realize like, oh, the rest of the world would cut off their arm to hang out with your mother. And then like, you get perspective. So it's the same thing. Like I became friends with all these people and like, I had perspective on that, but then like, it becomes your life. So like you, you like lose perspective on it. But then like one day I was like, if I was like, if I took myself out of the situation, what I'm observing with hanging out with all these people, like no one's watching, there's no cameras. I'm like, if the world is obsessed with all these people, I mean, I'm bored. These are my friends that I hang out with all the time now, <laughs> but mm -hmm. people probably are interested in who had an extra drink and who fell off the bar stool and who went home with who. So I'm like, let me start a podcast and talk about all these little things. Listen, mm -hmm. if anything's really confidential, you know, I don't talk about it. Like you just know what to talk about. And there've been some casualties along the way, of course, where people are like, why did you talk about it? I'm like, well, I mean, now this is my business. So back off. You, you, <laughs> you do you and I'll do me. Okay. If you're, you know, we're talking about like how the lifelong uh, reality stars uh, might be kind of like playing it up, kind of fake, maybe not the most intelligent people. If you are becoming friends with these people, does that make you fake and not intelligent? No, because, well, first of all, I also <laughs> went to law school and used to practice corporate tax law. Now, I do just want to talk about stupid things in my adult <laughs> life. Like, I will be the first to admit that I want no part of any type of smart conversation. I just don't. I'm just not interested. Um, I mean, about reality TV, fine. But, like, other than that, um, no, because, like, you kind of, you kind of, like know where it's like you said like they're bigger than me per se in the world of being known but this is my show and i'll have it 
forever if I want it. And so to yeah. me, it's more like, well, sweetie, like when the door is closed for you, like, remember, like you should remember, you know, you should be nicer. Cause like you, you will be <laughs> fired. You will, whether it's like, it's going to happen. It happens. It's so strange that, that that's another trend I see is like, no matter how many people that you know that were fired, each person thinks they're above it. It's so weird. They just mm. think it's it's not going to be me, which that to me is shocking. It's like, you think you're that interesting and entertaining. And I mean, people get fired after 10 years, nine years. Like there's no, it's not like, oh, you, and then each person's still shocked every time. To me, mm. I would be the opposite. I would be like, I ain't nothing. Thank God <laughs> by the grace of some someone watching out for me i got another <laughs> year salary let's yeah. bank that shit and yeah. this is it this is my last year and then like if i came back i'd be like well i don't know how that happens but okay <laughs> but every time they're shocked like how could it be me it's like mm -hmm. well you've seen 800 other people on your own show get fired like i don't get it you thought you were mm -hmm. i mean that's another trend i think a lot of these reality stars just believe the hype yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah there has to be some ego to it again like if you're on that show and think you're interesting enough to be one of the five people or seven people on the show like you have to have some form of ego about yourself that might not be realistic you do but then like is it really you no it could have been anyone yeah. it's now editing <laughs> and it's your co-stars like when someone hates you you should be thrilled. You have someone yeah. to play <laughs> off of now. Like that makes your that makes your season. And there are housewives that understand this. Like I've had housewives yeah. say to me, like, "Yeah, I don't like her, but she's good for the show. Like I need her, and she needs me." Well, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. you you get it. Like a, a lot of them get it, but not all of them do. So it's just yeah. kind of like, yeah, you have someone to riff off of. Like that gives you, like, great. That makes your yeah, life yeah. easier. Your whole season's easier now that someone's coming for you. All you have to do is react. Yeah. How often is that constructed? How often are they actually really super tight in real life, but then they decide we're going to hate each other now and, and, and pretend? I think all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> I think all yeah. of the above. What is shocking is how they take it to such an extreme because then they do, it's when they double down on social media Mm -hmm. that like that's what i i've always said this i don't understand that like to me if i were getting my check i wouldn't care what you did to me on air i wouldn't care what you said mm -hmm. it just yeah. it's like fair game and then like when they said cut i would just be like all right today's <laughs> my day to get it mm -hmm. <laughs> i wouldn't but it doesn't work that way these people yeah. take it to true hate and extreme, like it, mm. it yeah. becomes their life. So, uh, David, you have the podcast behind the velvet rope. Um, anything else you want to plug or more you want to talk about the, the podcast you do? Well, like I said, because of COVID, my book will probably be out in 700 years. So no, great, no, no reason to plug that it's been plugged and people are actually DMing and being like, where can I get this book? And I'm like, yeah, that's that's a good Not. question. So we don't need to plug that too much. Um, you know, I would just say the podcast, like, so it's turned into like five days a week. It's every day, and it's a different interview every day. And it's housewives. It's I like doing blast from the past. Like if you watched Bravo mm -hmm. in the beginning, we mm -hmm. have like the Jonathan Antons and the Patty Stangers. That probably means nothing to you, mm -hmm. but. Nope. <laughs> They're old school Bravo people. We have the first Bachelorette we're sitting down with this week, Trista Sutter. So like, mm -hmm. it's really every reality show. We do like lots of RuPaul's Drag Race. It's just yeah. different interviews. I mean, my people say that my interview style is, I mean, I do have, I guess, it's not conscious, but it's become what people say. It's like, this is my interview style. I will kind of like invite you in. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you drinks. I mean, not <laughs> not real drinks because like we're on Zoom, but like yeah. it's kind of yeah. like going on a date with someone. Like I'll take you out. I'll hold the door for you. I'll buy you drinks. I'll buy you dinner. But when all of that is said and done, like 30 minutes into it, mama wants some and I will go in <laughs> for the kill. So what people say is like, I think I have an interview style, which is disarming and I will just relax you 
But if we have to get to certain topics, I am going to bring them up. I'm channeling Real Housewives reunions by having some breakfast wine. And I'm just pretending like I was it's gonna, in I, I didn't know if that was water or wine. Nope. It's some rosé. Oh, my God. I'm so just So it's like earlier there and you're drinking rosé and it's later here and i'm drinking coffee so i don't know what yep, i yep, don't know what yep. that means no it's just pure it's only there's an only reason i'm drinking rosé is to celebrate the housewives yeah. there's no other, <laughs> well, no other on, on the next season of our show kyle's going to rehab it we're just like we're planting <gasps> yeah. the seeds of then that. i'm gonna start <laughs> then i'm gonna be be a showgirl and then i'm gonna become terrible and insufferable it's well, gonna then be you're so much really fun. housewives ready if you go to rehab I, right <laughs> uh, because I'll start the the house man's. <laughs> so uh, behind the velvet rope, where can people find uh, your show? So yeah, so behind the velvet rope, you can find it on Apple, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are listened to. And as far as my social media presence, despite the fact that I'm on all platforms, it really comes down to just Instagram behind <laughs> velvet rope. There's no the, so just behind velvet rope. Well, thank you so much for being on. We really appreciate all your uh, reality TV insight. Sorry, you know, hopefully you guys weren't too bored with my reality diatribe. No, I got to pre I got to pretend like I'm kind of in like kind of know some shit, so I felt good about that. <laughs> no, it was wonderful. Thank you so much for being <laughs> on David Yantif. We appreciate your time. Thank you. You yeah. We have to take a, you have to oh, take a yeah, break. that's right. Should we take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. <laughs> let's take a break. Sorry. <laughs> break. <laughs> oh, man, I got to queue up your lines, Mike. Yeah, I know. Shit. <laughs> right. This is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. Are you ready? Yeah. So are we back? We're back. <laughs> We're back. Uh, we are going to do our gayest and straightest. We're going to do our gayest and straightest. But first, our website is gayishpodcast.com. We are on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, at Gayish Podcast. We're going to try to start some drama after this episode. So, yeah, stay hooked on, on those channels. Hooked on phonics. Uh, our hotline, you can send us text messages or leave us voicemails, is 5855-GAYISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rate supply. Our email is gayishpodcast at gmail.com. And our physical mailing address is Post Office Box 19882, Seattle, Washington, 98109. Hey, Mike. Hey, Kyle. Speaking of our post office. I know, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, we got a uh, package from... It's a bulging package. A bulging package from Matthew. Matthew. I'm trying to do... Is it French? Um, yeah. It is French. So let's open this up and see what we have. It came all the way from Canada. Okay, uh, let me give you yours. There's little baggies for uh, Mike, me, and fucking Dan. Oh my god. They seem like they're read, homemade read, things. Read oh, wait, the there's a note. Hello. Uh, just a little... Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> just a little appreciation gift for you guys. Uh, I hope you will survive the plague. Uh, happy Halloween. You guys make my work less boring. I'm very emotional, and I'll be honest, sometimes... Uh, your subjects of discussion do get to me. Uh, I work in a nursing home for retired. Who thought that was a different word for a hot second? Retired uh, privates, priets for retired priests. Nope, retired priets, piets, puets. Can I see it? <laughs> no, it's puets. <laughs> I got there. Retired. Parrots. Those are <laughs> okay. Okay, good call. <laughs> I work in a nursing home for retired parrots, and uh, every subject you do is so gay. I love it. Like Kyle says, "Be butch, be fabulous, be you." Thank you. Uh, die, die while, aka Matthew C. Aww. Did I? I feel like Dwick. I feel like that might be a reference to something we said or something I should know about, but I don't know what it means. Do wheels? Do what? Do what? Do you? Do what? Do, do wheels? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. This is fucking adorable. It's a Mike doll made out of yarn, a Kyle doll made oh out of yarn, God. a fucking Dan doll made out of yarn, and a yarn pumpkin for Halloween. The, okay. This pumpkin is so good. Yeah. Like, I'm very impressed. Um, oh, my God. I'm adorable. We're going to take pictures and put this up on, on uh, Instagram. Insta. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you so much, Matthew. And Dan, uh, who's out in Baghdad doing his reporting, when he yeah. gets back, um, we will give him his, which is like, yeah, a little cute little Dan and a pumpkin that kind of looks like a bud. Oh, adorable. Gay and straightest? Oh, thank you. By the, thank you. That is very sweet of you. Also, also. Uh, for, we forgot to mention the contact information that we have a Discord server, which... They were adorable. Last yeah. night for Halloween, unprompted uh, TV on our Discord server organized a gayish Discord movie night. Yeah. They all got together and watched Death Becomes Her together and talked on, on, on chat with each other. It's fucking adorable. Yeah, it was super cute. Y'all are so adorbs. Um, so now, join the Discord if, Discord if you want. Join the Discord. And then you motherfuckers. Ooh. Fuckers, oh, listen up. Oh, right, right, right. You have until tomorrow to get your shit together and vote for us in the Discover Pods Awards. Go to awards.discoverpods.com and click vote and choose gayish in the LGBT culture category. You have until tomorrow, November the 6th, so get your fucking shit together, you dickbags. If you want. We, su <laughs> we support you either way, you know? You're special in, in, in your own way. Yeah. And this is episode 199, Kyle. Fuck. Next oh. episode is 200. Okay, yeah. I for, We need to ask people um, if you want to send in a question. Every 50 episodes, we do a Q&A. This year, we are doing a special kind of Q&A. So the, the question is to you folks, if you want to send in a question, the question is something you would ask us at a high school reunion. So it has to be on that theme. What that means, though, you decide. Um, and send in your questions. Email, text message, DM us on Instagram. I would probably say email. Um, and maybe put 200 uh, so that we can kind of find them easier. And we'll answer our fave ones. We already have actually um, some really Quite great questions. So, uh, yeah, send yours in. Great. And I, I think for, well, I haven't talked about to you about this. I think for like the Patreon segment for this, we could answer all the other questions that we didn't get time to on the show. Oh, for that episode or for this yeah. episode? No, no, no. For, the, no, for that episode. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, send in, send in any and all of your questions and hopefully we'll get to them one way or another. Sure. Do you want to do our gays and straightest? Yeah, gays and straightest. I'm happy to go first. Okay. Great. Are you gay to go first? Yep. <laughs> uh, the straightest thing about me this week is my dad's boat <laughs> and, and talking to him about it like I care. Mm. It, it's just the engine this, the control module broken that, the RPMs on the tachometer it's just he just he just he wants to tell me about his boat and I think it's adorable that he wants to connect. And I do a real good job of, of like knowing what he's talking about and responding. But yeah, uh, I can tell which of those words you said were real <laughs> and which you just made up. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> tachometer <laughs> seemed kind of fake to me. Oh, a tachometer is a thing. Ah, fuck. Great. Never okay. Um, yeah. Talking to my dad about his boat and all of its engine parts yeah. is, is pretty pretty straight. The gayest thing about me this week, I tried to go to Costco yesterday. I drove all the way to Costco, saw that there was a line to get into the parking lot, threw a gay hissy and drove home. <laughs> Fuck this. I'm not doing that. I will not wait in that line. I don't wait in lines. Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, my uh, gayest is uh, I was invited to a free Britney rally, like protest rally. Usually she costs money. What? It's, she's she's free. She's free, free Britney. Oh, <laughs> good one. I totally got it. Great. We'll edit in my laughter right after. Fantastic. Oh, oh, oh. great. Um, <laughs> leave uh, Britney alone. <laughs> uh, leave Mike alone. Yeah. Um, which I'm not going. I'm like, I, yes, I go to Black Lives Matter protests because I think that is an important enough thing that I'm willing to take the risks. Yeah. Look, Britney's cool and everything, but not COVID risk. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd have to draw a line somewhere. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. I mean, no, but really the, the, <laughs> I no. Okay. Um, let's prioritize everybody. <laughs> uh, straightest is I realized, so I saw this really nice arm, like, uh, it was attached to a human, not separate. Okay, okay um, great. Uh, that's ideal. Um, <laughs> it's and it was floating like, severed <laughs> arm on the bus. <laughs> Happy Halloween! <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, it's kind of buff. Like, oh, I wonder if the person who it's attached to is a dude or not. And then I realized, like, I 
I think I'm starting to be better at like just being into like individual body parts. I don't have, it doesn't matter. Like that arm is attractive to me, regardless of who it's attached to. It ended up being attached to a more female presenting person. I have no idea, Mm -hmm. but I was like, you know what? I can still be into that arm no matter what. That's great. Yeah. I'm so progressive and fancy. Yeah. I like body parts, not people. I'm body sexual. Great. Ladies, if you have good choking arms, <laughs> Brew Kyle, it. Kyle's for you. <laughs> uh, do we have a listener's gay? We have a listener's gay. Straightest, this one comes to us from Discord. Straightest, spilling chocolate sauce on my pillows and then turning them over so I don't have to bother cleaning them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the avoidance approach. What's bad is then you, when you spill on that side and you flip it over and you're like, ah, shit, uh, yeah. that fucking chocolate <laughs> stain from two months ago. Yep, yep. <laughs> Gayest, resting my head on the clean side of those pillows mm-hmm. to watch Death Becomes Her with the crew of the Gayish Discord server. Oh! If you pick this, feel free to use my real name, Jermaine St. Germain, which that's not a real name. That's not a, no. <laughs> Try again. Have, have a different name. <laughs> that's not real. Great. <laughs> it is, <laughs> your name is not Jermaine to this conversation. Uh, so that's it. A thank you to David Yontif from Behind the Velvet Rope. Mm-hmm. Thanks again for being on the show. Yeah. And thank you to, I'm going to take a swing, President Joe Biden. Oh, great. Taking a risk here. Who knows what really happened because we don't yet. If you jinx this, I will throw uh, wine at you. But <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, and a thank you to Kyle. Me? Richards. But, <laughs> man, I was so into myself. She's the best. I just she's the best housewife. She's real. It's not because of her name. This has been Gayish. I'm Mike Johnson. Kyle Dix. Um, I'm Kyle Getz until next week. Be butch, be fabulous, be you. Be real. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> The breakfast wine helps.